welcome back to my channel or if you're new here I do mostly bookshop videos but sometimes other stuff too and last week we did my disappointing reads of 2021 so it only makes sense to now mention my favorites of 2021 starting off with the first favorite of 2021 perfect on paper by Sophie Gonzalez this was a standalone and wow was it a great read this is a frenemies to lovers type YA contemporary. It also talks about different attachment styles, which was very interesting. I had faintly heard about attachment styles, but nothing super in specific. So hearing this be talked about in the book just gave me an idea of how these different attachment styles can affect our relationships. I think I mentioned this book in my mid-year freakout tag as well, so I think I mentioned a bit more details in that. It was just really fun. Friendmies to Lovers is just superior in my opinion. I loved it. Gave me all of the fuzzy feelings inside. The second favorite is still a really, really great book but on a more serious tone than Perfect on Paper and that is The Mirror Season by Anna Marie McLemore. This is another one that I also mentioned in my mid-year freakout tag that I still think about to this day. The Mirror Season is a story about trauma and not just surviving but healing and how that looks different to different people. Our two main characters Graciela and Locke were sexually assaulted on the same night but only Graciela remembers exactly what happened. Locke knows that something happened to him that night but he has no memory of it. They form an unlikely friendship and Graciela decides to protect Locke and never tells him what she knows happened to the both of them that night which causes an internal conflict inside of Graciela because she doesn't want to burden him or what she thinks would be burden him with the details of what happened that night. So she thinks she's doing him a service because she, as being someone who remembers everything from that night, it's been traumatic for her. She thinks that by not telling him the truth, she's saving him from a very painful time. Books like these are so difficult to read because of the heavy themes but at the same time I think they bring a form of comfort because it does light up hope that healing is possible and it's not easy but hopefully we'll all be able to get to a place of where we're not just surviving but we're healing. Third on this list is Kingdom of the Cursed by Carrie Maniscalco and this is the second book in the Kingdom of series that she currently has out so I can't give you too many details or really any details about the plot because I don't want to spoil anything for you from book one. To be perfectly honest with you I have very little idea as to what is going on in the plot plot. There are so many twists and turns and betrayals and lies that it is very hard to keep track of. And you know what? I don't care. I'm fine with that actually because I am here for the steamy times of which there are a many of in this book and it was just a good old time. Ma'am. Yeesh. <laughs> so the plot is whack. <laughs> it's not whack. It's, it's not just... about the plot. <laughs> The plot is not whack. It's just hard to follow for my tiny small brain that I have. Your distracted brain. It's a little distracted, okay? I said, to be perfectly honest. <laughs> Amelia and Rath have such a hot push and pull romance and plot wise I would probably give this a three stars, but the freaking chemistry just gives it that extra oomph. And you know what I'm talking about out there fellow readers. I know we all have that one book whose plot is like meh but that romance exquisite. I will say just warning I did notice a lot of the reviews on Goodreads for this book mentioned it which I appreciate it but there is a very uncomfortable scene in this book in chapter 17 regarding consent. I do believe it was extremely unnecessary and did nothing to move along the along the plot. I think what the author was trying to do was showcase Wrath's ruthlessness and evil, but it just left a very bad taste in my mouth and it was again just super uncomfortable to read. Once I finished that chapter it was like okay that was very out of place and again 
just unnecessary. So beware. Next, I also have to mention the Sundown Motel by Simon St. James. And I just have to say this is a new favorite author of mine because I read two of their books and they both blew me away. I think I gave them both five stars. The writing, the plot, the twist, fantastic. And they all have some kind of paranormal aspect to it, which I did not expect to like. It's a paranormal mystery, but I feel like it's not a ghost story in the way that when I hear paranormal, I think ghosts, but like cheesy type ghosts and spirits. But this is just done so, so well. The atmosphere the author created had me wanting to read this book in the daylight. And again, I'm not usually a fan of ghost elements or, you know, notes and hints from the beyond, but they meshed the elements so, so well in this book without it seeming cheesy and corny. This will be an auto buy author for me, or not auto buy, but auto read for me. I will read whatever this author puts out. All of the previous books are in no particular order. They are all books that I thoroughly enjoyed in 2021, but this last one has to be the favorite of 2021 just because of the way it left me thinking about it for days and weeks afterwards. I was so giddy. I did a reading vlog for this book, which I will link up in the cards if you want to watch it. It just gave me book hangover, and as readers, I'm sure you know that feeling. Isn't it so hard when you've read a really good book that gives you all these fuzzy warm feelings and then it's like how am I supposed to follow that up like what do I read next what is going to fulfill me the way this book fulfills me and I am talking about The Shadows Between Us by Trisha Levenseller and this is also a standalone YA fantasy which I am so upset about because I would kill to see more from these characters I was so scared it would put me into a slump just because what else can give me the same feelings and emotions and rush that this book gave me. Like, that's how hard I liked this book. Alessandra, our main character, is a very much a badass sex positive icon. Alessandra wants to be queen and by golly, she is going to be a goddamn queen. I mean, she does not care who she has to step on, who she has to murder, but she is going to get there. She has a plan and she's gonna follow that plan. I will say we lacked a bit in explaining the Shadow King's power. So like the actual fantasy elements, I, I don't think they were explained the best. I was very confused, but you know what? I was willing to overlook it because that romance <laughs> was distracting enough that I don't even care. He's a Shadow King. Do we need to know more? No, because romance. Those were my favorites of 2021. Clearly, I am very easily distracted by romances in these books, but still, they had great plots that kept me intrigued, and obviously I made it to the end of the book, so there was something there. Let me know down in the comments if you've read any of these books. Do you agree with my ratings? Do you think they were five-star reads, or did you read them and think that romance was not enough to save it, girl? That was a terrible book. Thank you so much for watching. Please give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Also, subscribe if you haven't already we're hoping to hit 500 subscribers by the end of the year so you know starting now help a girl out my name is Elle wishing you all five star reads this year and I'll see you in next time's video